Alcohol-related crime, as I mentioned, is the, is the area where um, uh, materials has majored so far, um, uh, and in a very interesting way. And I'll say a bit, a bit about the project now. Um, now, there are something like, forgive me, not getting the statistic exact, but something uh, about 40, 42,000 what we call glassings a year um, uh, in England and Wales, um, which is essentially you know, people being uh, attacked uh, in pubs and clubs um, using broken glasses as weapons. Uh, now, um, the government's approach to this is to target um, those pubs and clubs that are a problem. So there are clearly some pubs and clubs where this is a problem, um, and many pubs and clubs where it's not. Um, and so, you know, in order to be fair, it makes, it, it makes sense to target those where this is a problem. And where it is a problem, um, then the use of polycarbonate uh, in drinking vessels um, is, um, is, is required. Now, what we're doing uh, with material scientists um, and Bernie and John Bounders and so on is um, looking at the alternative to uh, conventional glassware in a way that might encourage the rest of the industry nationally to take it up. Um, uh, uh, if we can demonstrate a business case for a new material um, that consumers like, that customers like, that washes well in dishwashers, that transports easily and isn't too heavy, is economical, um, and on top of that, doesn't shatter, um, then we'll have achieved something, I think, which I hope, which we hope, will lead to quite a big culture change uh, within the licensed industry, away from conventional glass into the new material. Um, and we have a new material which needs to be trialled, um, and it's looking hopeful, but we just need to look at it much more closely now and assess the business case. But if it, if it takes off, um, it'll be a very interesting example, I think, of how uh, materials... Uh, will have influenced and changed the whole drinking culture in this in this country. Um, that's why I'm here today, essentially, mainly for, for, because of that contact with that project. On hot products, we recently launched. Um, uh, it uh, actually it was earlier this week. Um, a major competition with the Technology Strategy Board and the Design Council, um, inviting bids for uh, for some money to develop. Um, prototypes for securing mobile terminals, mobile phones, if you like. Um, what we're looking for are good ideas that make it harder to steal the phone or worthless to steal the phone or make it, um, or that secure the data on the phone. That competition is live at the moment. It was announced on Monday. Um, we're looking for consortia of skills who, uh, for funding, um, to develop these prototypes, and if anyone's interested, you can look at the, uh, you can get the details on the Design Council's website or the technology or through the Technology Strategy Board. Um, it is being managed through the Design Council. Uh, and fifthly, business crime. We're in the process of scoping that work. We're likely to focus probably on shop theft, as that is a major, a major concern for retailers um, in this particular economic uh, climate. Um, and we'll, we'll have to wait and see what, what comes out of uh, their requirements. Right, OK. Um, so that, that's where we are at the moment. Now, um, what I wanted to do was think a bit more kind of generally about how materials can, can help reduce crime. Um, and um, in, a, in a systematic way. And what I did was apply... Um, the, some of the principles that are, are well used and tried in the field of designing out crime for designers. Now, the underlying theory behind all of this designing out crime activity um, is that opportunities cause crime. And then if you, can, um, if you can remove those opportunities, then you will reduce crime. Um, so, essentially... Um, it's opportunities that cause crime. Many of these opportunities are highly specific, focused on very specific kinds of problems. Um, 
new forms of technology can create new opportunities which need to be closed down. Um, they can be reduced. Um, they can be reduced through design activity and um, usually crime is not displaced. So there is a, you know, a real reduction in crime. Uh, so that's the underlying theory, the underlying concept behind all of this, which we need to kind of bear in mind, is that actually this is about reducing opportunities for crime. And, and as an example, as, as I quite like this example, um, this is the city centre, it was the old city centre in, in, in Birmingham, um, in the Bull Ring, uh, and the particular problem that they had at the time, and it was really, really kind of a big problem, was uh, people um, pickpockets taking the bags out of the tops, taking the purses out of the tops of bags being carried by old ladies shopping in the market. So you can see quickly how very specific we've got in working out what the problem is. It's not just a problem of theft, it's a very specific problem. Um, and what they did um, was to, essentially, just to cut a long story short, uh, was to uh, in increase the gangway width in the market. So on the, on the left there is a diagram of what it was like, and on the right a diagram of what it was like after they um, increased the gangway width from two metres to three metres. Uh, and the effect was, was that, and that's the number of thefts in that market and surrounding markets, uh, and it was a very dramatic fall uh, in the rates of those kind of thefts. Now, that, that's a really interesting example for me because uh, it, highlights all sorts of, it highlights all sorts of issues. First of all, it shows how the environment creates opportunities for offenders. Uh, when it's very crowded, they can't be seen, and it's very easy to, to do what they do. Um, the second thing is that design is, in that case, the best solution. Um, there were other possibilities. You could mount some sort of advertising campaign to get those ladies to keep their bags secure. Um, the problem is, though, that is uh, not an easy thing to do because they're in a market where they need access to their purse all the time, and that was very unlikely. And the, the third alternative is policing, uh, which will work for a while, but it's very hard to sustain that sort of intervention. So design works, and it works, and it's sustainable. Um, the other issue uh, that this sort of example raises is that uh, altering the gangway width was not, um, not a popular thing to do. Um, and this is a problem, and the reason why we have a team on this in the Home Office is that um, getting design changes uh, is often um, uh, not, not an easy thing to do because often those people that need to make the change have no interest in doing it. Um, and in this case, for example, the market traders uh, liked having crowded, narrow gangways because of the way they trade, they get a lot of interest, they can build up excitement and activity, um, and it was not in their interest to make the, um, to reduce congestion, essentially, uh, in the market. The city council went ahead and did it um, for, 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 to reduce the crime problem. Um, but so when I, if you go back originally, when I talked about incentives, um, you know, uh, there are no incentives here for the market traders to do that, um, principally because they, it was not, the cost of crime was not falling on their shoulders, uh, and that's often the problem. Anyway, that's a whole different, different talk, and I won't, I won't get into that. Uh, it's just to make the point that designing out crime works. Uh, and these are some examples, um, which I won't go through, but these are examples, all examples which business has done when it has an economic reason to do it. Um, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't do that if it didn't work. Uh, so um, designing out crime works, um, and what we're trying to do is to get it right, the thinking right in at the, at the drawing board stage. <laughs>